Welcome back to day 5 of Random Math Stuff. Day 5, you ask, didn't you upload day 4 a week ago? Anyway, today we will be figuring out whether or not you can cut a hexagon into smaller copies of itself. First, let's consider regular hexagons. By cutting out a bunch of smaller copies like this, you are left with equilateral triangles everywhere. Can we fill these in with regular hexagons? You can place a hexagon in the center, which will leave you with more equilateral triangles. This might seem like a dead end, but you can just repeat this process infinitely and do this for every equilateral triangle that pops up until there's no red area left. So yes, you can cut a regular hexagon into smaller copies of itself, it just takes infinitely many cuts. It's up to you to decide whether or not this counts as a valid solution. By the way, math is more subjective than a lot of people think. Math is generally known to always be black or white, right or wrong, and it does aim to be as objective as possible, but some elements of opinion, such as axioms, are unavoidable. Well, those are just my thoughts, I don't really know anything. Back to the question. Are there any solutions that don't require infinitely many cuts and infinitely many hexagons? Unfortunately, there are not. Regular hexagons only have 120 degree angles, so it's impossible to fit two of them onto a line. In other words, there's no way to get rid of this 60 degree angle. So yes, there are an infinite amount of cuts. Now here's some stuff for you to think about. The total combined length of all the cuts is also infinite, but we haven't proved this, we've only proved the amount of cuts is infinite. There might be another way to cut the hexagon so that you have infinite cuts, but not infinite length. So is that possible? Well, I don't know, you have fun with that. Okay, so we're done with regular hexagons. Now let's deal with non-regular hexagons. If you're able to have any sort of hexagon, then this L shape will work. You can fill it with four smaller copies of itself, and this is actually a pretty popular puzzle that you may have seen before. I'm almost certain that there are other solutions, but I haven't really gone looking for them. Okay, enough of that. There are lots of variations of this problem that you could explore, yada yada yada, I might make a video on those later. Anyway, one more thing before you go, I made a little puzzle that I'd like to share. First, some background. It's pretty easy to fill up space using cubes, and you can do it without leaving any gaps in between. And this isn't the only way to arrange the cubes, you can also stagger them a little bit. But they're not completely staggered, as you can see, each corner is still touching three other corners. I can stagger them even more so that now each corner is only touching one other corner. Here's another example of how that works. This green corner only touches this blue corner. So here's the puzzle. Can we go lower? Is it possible to get a configuration where no corners are touching each other? If yes, find that configuration, and if no, prove that you can't find one. Have some time to think. Okay, the answer is no, it's not possible. Take a random cube and examine any one of its corners. Draw the x-axis, y-axis, and z-axis, which splits the space around the corner into 8 octants, the same way the x and y axes split the coordinate plane into 4 quadrants. This is important, so take some time to really visualize this. Right now, only one of those 8 octants is filled with cube, and notice we need all 8 to be filled if we want no gaps between our cubes. So let's fill the other 7 octants by adding in some cubes. There are two ways to do this. Either we add a cube like this, so that it's sort of aligned to the existing cube in the same plane, or we add a cube like this, so that it's not really aligned but it's still glued to the cube. The first way will lead to two new octants being filled, and the second way will lead to four octants being filled. Again, take some time to think about this and really visualize it. Since two and four are both even numbers, you can't fill seven octants. You can only fill six, and this last one has no choice but to be filled in with a corner touching cube. But, you may ask, what if our cubes are oriented differently? This proof wouldn't work anymore, would it? Well, we would just shift our focus to this corner instead and do the exact same thing with the xyz axes and the octants. Here, there are three octants left to be filled, and the only way to fill them all is by using a corner touching cube. Okay, I think I covered every case there, let me know if I missed something, and sorry if you didn't understand because of my horrible drawings. And that's all the math I have for you. I may not make a video about math competitions like I talked about last video, main reason being the community around math competitions is really toxic for some reason and I don't really want that on the channel. Anyway, I'll see you tomorrow. Peace.